So welcome everybody. Uh, here we have Sinik. He's a computer scientist from Washington, and he actually lives in Milan, uh, where he works for the Hermes project uh, for digital human rights. See. Sí. Okay. So welcome, Sinik. Awesome. Uh, okay. So. Um, GlobalX. I think uh, most of you are familiar with this project, but for those, ah, okay. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, uh, this is a project. Uh, this is really a platform that anonymizes whistleblowers as they transmit information to organizations. So uh, it's kind of like WordPress, but it is a website that runs on uh, a Tor as a Tor hidden service. So uh, we've seen. Uh, over 25 different, um, like f I, th th I think it's closer to 50 now, but we've seen uh, many civic organi organizations and civic society use this tool to uh, collect information from whistleblowers and uh, do interesting things with it. Either take take inf take uh, data public, challenge their states, or uh, you know promote transparency. Um, at this conference five years ago, actually, um, this project was started. So I'm not sure how many of you how uh, ra how many of you were at ESC five years ago. Is there anybody? No, that's fantastic. Nave, this guy was. Um, but five years ago, uh, Arturo Filastro uh, actually announced. Uh, we you know we did a presentation and they announced the the founding of this project. Um, very interesting. Now. Uh, Five years ago, there was kind of a different uh, approach uh, that was taken, and the the, the thinking was uh, GlobalX was going to be a tool uh, to aggressively, not aggressively, but uh, get information to targets via uh, a web portal. So you hand somebody a link, uh, and uh, it's kind of a tro it's a kind of a trolling idea, but uh, it's very entertaining. Uh, you give somebody a link with information. Uh, that may or may not uh, be something they want to see, but you know, if if you can sort of bring them into the leaking process, maybe you can generate uh, some form of activism. Uh, today, uh, we've we've uh, not moved on, but we've changed the freaking dialogue, and uh, we're looking at providing manuals for the people who use the system. So what's happened is, as this project has grown. Uh, We've seen, you know, we're trying to support more and more users and more and more different use cases for a, a, a tool for whistleblowing and a tool for taking information uh, from sources who want to stay anonymous and uh, keeping them anonymous for as long as possible so we can process that data safely. Um, so it's interesting. So uh, what we're looking at today is uh, more changes to the system. Uh, and specifically, we're looking at um, moving the encryption that we've previously done on a server into uh, web browsers to protect data arrest. Um, the idea here is that in the current system, uh, organizations that that uh, have non-technical folks that have journalists that are, you know, that are governments that are corporations, uh, either have stringent requirements for handling data or or installing new applications. So uh, what we're trying to do is provide a complete solution for whistleblowing. So what that means is we want to get rid of a requirement that we have, which is a dependency on using GPG or a, a, a custom tool that sits on a, uh, a, a recipient to information, a, a recipient's computer. So, um, this is a specification we've been working on for the last, uh, I think, I mean, originally it was like 2012, we started talking about this, and we started implementing it in uh, December of 2015. We're at the point now where uh, we're, we're, we're trying to put this in front of people, we're trying to put this in front of you guys, um, describe it well, and see if there are problems with this, with this approach. If there's problems, if, if uh, there's weaknesses, and this is the this is the part where we defend it. We defend our choices, and we say, okay, this is this is actually an active change. This is new cryptography, uh, and we think it's secure. 
So uh, with that said, uh, what are we doing? Uh, basically, the goal is to store is for a whistleblower to store nothing in their browser. So we're performing encryption in the browser, and we want that, that we want that whistleblower to have no information stored in their browser. So they take a secret away. Once they generate a submission, once they send files to us via Tor, or via HTTPS, or some some other transport, uh, they they walk away with a single piece of uh, a single authentication token. It's something we call a receipt. Um, said this already. Um, and additionally, we want uh, the ability for the organizations that are that are taking this information or receiving this information to be able to add new recipients to uh, to submissions that have been created. So if you are, uh, you know, the, uh, the Authority for National Corruption in Italia, um, maybe you have turnover of, ha of handlers who, you know, or you have a review process where somebody, somebody at the top of your organization takes submissions and says, ah, this is for this team, this is for this team, this is for this team. And we want to handle that in cryptography, not through uh, some access control system. And finally, uh, for the deployed systems out there, we want to try to support an upgrade that lets them uh, take the, 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 the version of Global Leaks we have deployed today and upgrade into this new system. Okay. So I'm just going to walk through the, the, the use case here because why not? So uh, we get a whistleblower. He's somebody who sees something wrong. He's somebody who cannot uh, or does not want to or has tried the traditional channels within their organization or within their environment has said, uh, I can't go public with this information in this way. I need to remain anonymous. I need to use a tool like GlobalLeaks. Maybe he reads the manual. Not a requirement. Um, after, after figuring out who to talk to, he, c he can connect with either a, a normal web browser. It, de it actually depends on the configuration of the, of, of, our, of the service that's running, but either you can connect with a normal web browser or a Tor browser via Tor Hidden Service. Um, once that, once that connection is established, he uploads files, he answers a questionnaire, and he issues a receipt. Uh, after that has happened, the organization is basically, it's like a content management system. Global is a content, I mean, you get a, you see a submission, and the whistle, and the, the organization uh, can follow up. And we find this is very important for groups that actually want high quality and, and, uh, Feed, you know, it's sort of a, it's a process. It's not just you know dump a bunch of files and walk away. So uh, you know, we we try to support this. Uh, we try to support this use case of oh, having uh, having comments and messages and the ability to uh, handle the the relationship of a of a whistleblower with that organization. And after uh, after that submission has been created, after that conversation has occurred, uh, the, the the organization decides what they want to do, um, and they don't. You know, this this service doesn't provide any ability f to to take that information and publish it on the web or publish it on a torrent or put it on IP, IPFS. Uh, it's just internally. It's just an internal system. Uh, once once the whistleblower has come in, so. Um, what actually what is actually happening what is what lives on disk and I'm not sure uh, the, the the names here aren't important it's just to get the get the concept for a moment which is um, on the day on the system on this this global leaks node we have files that get stored which are you know files uh, <laughs> comments which are uh, messages which everybody in the everybody who's a party to this tip or a party to this submission can read and messages which are which are intended to be private between a single recipient and a s and, and the whistleblower. Okay. And these are the these are the new constructs that we're introducing here. These these are the new data structures. Okay. So at a technical level, what actually happens when you connect to Global Leaks with a web browser, either the Tor browser or you know uh, incognito session of your f browser of choice. So uh, after the application loads, uh, we issue a challenge. The server issues the challenge, sends the public keys of the intended recipients and assault to the user's browser. The user creates, responds with a challenge, CA, 
which has, uh, which is basically it's a combination of a captcha. It's configurable, but it's it's sorry, it's configurable, but it's a combination of a captcha and a uh, a proof of work. So once we determine, once the server determines that uh, the there's a there's there's a human and functioning JavaScript uh, on that in that client in this session, it issues a token, and this token is going to live. Uh, for the rest of rest of the submission, the rest of the process, uh, and it's and it's going to live as T parameterized on these uh, submissions to the to the server. So this is the initialization. It actually happens uh, anytime a whistleblower connects, and if there are any problems with that that connection, we can just revoke T and walk away. So uh, this this is this is the authentication of the the session itself for the whistleblower. Now. Uh, when that when that whistleblower walks through the the submission process, what's actually happening are two key, two uh, GPG keys are generated. Sorry, PGP keys are generated. I always mix this up, um, and the the notation is a little funky here. But this is uh, the private key of the whistleblower and the public key of the whistleblower. And this is the so it's S for secret, but it's the uh, private key of the for the session and the public key for the session. So uh, the whistleblower's client generates two two keys. The session key is actually this key right here, which he, he generates uh, for the for the intended recipients of this uh, of this submission. So once we've got this key um, we encrypt using the session key. We encrypt files that he submits using the session key. Okay, the server is going to store these, uh, and T is gone. There should be a T, whatever. Um, after okay, so after we we do these, and and actually, what's interesting is this is happening in a in a web browser. So this encrypt so this key is generated in the session of the browser, and. Uh, these these files are actually encrypted. We upload them in the browser. We encrypt them in memory. And we send them. It's complicated. There's a there's a protocol to stream this, and we can we can sort of do streaming data encryption in the browser. Interesting stuff. Kind of complicated. Whatever. Um, okay, we've generated some keys. We can generate a receipt uh, in in the format I'll get into in a little bit. But um, we generate. What we what we call a uh, the key the receipt key passphrase which is RK which is the, uh, a hash of this receipt uh, and this hash is parameterized with a salt sent from the server which we which was submitted earlier and the receipt so scrypt is a hash function it's a, a memory hard uh, password key derivation function actually uh, and we use it to uh, to basically extend and uh, make it difficult to brute force the key space. Okay, so Scrypt is a function that is that you can uh, force uh, a, a user to compute for some some amount of time. So if you want uh, a 250 millisecond computation, you can force that with the right parameters in Scrypt. And so this is what we do, in the sense of if you want to try a receipt key. Uh, a re sorry, a, a receipt key. You have to spend 250 milliseconds computing that in a web browser. Um, you can do it faster, and we're going to go into that. Now, um, once this content has been encrypted, once the files have been encrypted, there's a there's a final step of uploading uh, the the whistleblower's key, the ha a hash of this receipt key. And the tip, the the submission session key SKS. So, what the final step of actually creating a submission is uploading encrypt in uploading a, an encrypted package. So we have files and we have the the content that's going to let us reaccess uh, this submission. And uh, what's interesting here? So uh, this encryption of access public key lists, the the access public key list is uh exists as uh 
a session key uh, as, exists as a, uh, oh, this is complicated. I love it though. Uh, so PKR, PKR2, PKR3 are the public keys that correspond to the, the offline private keys of the receiver. Uh, we issue a, uh, we, we, there's a, there's a, uh, a, a sub, there's a not a sub key, but it's a, a, a symmetric key that each one of these. The, there's a single symmetric key that encrypts the session key for this uh, for this object, which is the session key for the whole for the whole submission, and it's issued to the intended recipients of this uh, the intended recipients of this submission. Very simple. These guys have access to it. Um, this this session key, as we as I'm trying to point out, is uh, what protects the f these files and comments. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now um, this yeah. So this is the data. This is this this content is still the data stored on the server. This this receipt has been stored offline, and these are offline. Now um, it's important that we're storing this the hash of rk because it allows us to authenticate the the whistleblower in future sessions so if the whistleblower wants to return to this submission uh, he needs to regenerate rk and submit the hash of rk to uh, re-access comments and messages that are stored in the system okay i'm not sure if actually you guys probably haven't been able to see this corner but uh laura so, uh, so when a whistleblower wants to come back after maybe, so what happens is you know a submission gets a submission gets generated, the 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 re intended recipients review it. They get a, they get an email notification about hey something has been submitted. Take a look. Maybe they leave some comments. Maybe they 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 review it and they delete it. They say no this is, this isn't worth it. Um, but if they if they're if they want to see the whistleblower come back. The receipt that he was issued is going to uh, have this this hash. This 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 guy is going to live, and this is the key for the the whistleblower to return to the system. So um, when he re when he returns after when the whistleblower returns after uh, f generating a new access control token, uses the hash of RK to get to get back the it's he's encrypt his encrypted messages and the encrypted session key of that whistleblower uh, with that with these with this content he can decrypt he can basically reconstruct uh, what he originally had which was SKW and the messages he submitted ignore this this is a mistake um, additionally uh, he can submit uh, more he can he can s encrypt new files and new messages and have the server store them so it's it's like you reconstruct the original state uh, without uh, you reconstruct the original state without this with only the public key of the tip se with, with only the, the public key of the tip session and you're back to where you started very interesting okay so uh, if this is the c this is the setup uh, if we if we're going to use this, uh, we actually need to look at what that receipt, the format of that receipt, uh, because if it's uh, there's a you know there's a requirement of entropy on brute forcing the key space that this that we have to look at. In the sense of uh, right now, uh, we use a six uh, a 16 digit uh, receipt, and we only use that to authenticate the, the recipient uh, in the same way, but we actually, because we're not performing the, it, Allora, actually it's not important. We're just going to talk about it in, in, in the abstract. So uh, there's a couple different formats that we can use for, uh, for uh, receipts. Um, the goal is to keep it, the, the goal is to keep the receipts small so that it's memorable and uh, feasibly deniable in the sense of if you write down uh, 16 digits 
you could pretend this is a credit card number. This is the same format as a credit card number, but um, if you have like a base 58 string, uh, it's a little less, little less obvious. If you have a hex string, uh, you know, if you're an artist or you're like, uh, you, uh, your secretary, it, it doesn't quite, you know, it's like, why do you, why would you have this if you're walking out of a building with this, with this, uh, with a USB? Well, if you're walking out of a building with a USB and a uh, hexadecimal, a 16 digit hexadecimal string. So, um, so we've got this thing, um, and we can actually look at the difficulty of uh, computing, uh, you know, enumerating the key space. So, uh, if we're interested in understanding what a good, what makes a good receipt for uh, to issue to people, so they, they don't have to memorize much, they don't have to write down much, and it's resistance to uh, an attacker, we just we can just analyze the, the the entropy and the difficulty of enumerating the key space. So. Uh, uh, this is this graph, and basically, uh, the parameters we're using for script are in the, not so important, but the the output is uh, the, the 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 this function uses 256 megabytes of memory. It takes about 250 uh, milliseconds in JavaScript to compute one hash. Uh, in in Python, using a native implementation, uh, you can do it in 17. You can do you can run it at 17 hertz uh, hashes per second, uh, and I think from from what it looks like from from the way the ASIC industry you know the the ASICs compare, maybe you can run uh, an ASIC at uh, 10 10 kilohashes a second in the sense of you can compute uh, 10 uh, 10,000 outputs of S script in a second. So, uh, if we had, if you were uh, a nation, or maybe you're, let's stick with a nation. If you're a nation and you're interested in a global leaks node, and you've uh, taken that server, uh, how much money? If you if you spend fifteen million dollars, you produce fifty thousand ASICs that that run at ten kil, uh, ten kilohashes a second, this is how long it takes to enumerate the key space. Um, and so basically, from my point of view, uh, this is, you know, you, you, we basically have to use something that requires uh, more than 33 weeks to enumerate the entire key space. Because once you've enumerated this, this key space, you know uh, all of the input you know all of the inputs for data per data encrypted with uh, the whistleblower's key. So you can go back and read the comments of submissions, and you can go back and read the messages. So you can go back and read the metadata. Uh, you still can't actually access the files because they weren't in, they you know the, we we never intended for the whistleblower to have access to the files after they were encrypted. But if you uh, s you know seize if you go and grab a, a receiver, if you go and grab one of these journalists um, and you get their, you know, you, you take their private key, you can come back through and, and get the files, the comments, and the messages. Okay. This, though, uh, is resolved with a hammer. Uh, you just destroy the hard drive, and this is no longer a problem. Okay. So, basically, this is the new system. Um, uh, we, you know, it, uh, it's described. Uh, it's described online, and we've implemented most of it. And okay, it does. You know, it's it, it's actually I think uh, quite modest in its goals, but I think it accomplishes them well. Now, uh, there's a couple. You know, there's a couple side notes, right? Uh, we can we can run. Uh, we can accomplish this this adding of new users to sessions simply by adding uh, the the user's public key to the tip session key once you know once somebody approves the the request we can run uh, all of the the logic all of the JavaScript for recipients in a, uh, a 
in an application that li lives on a desktop environment. So it's just a wrapper for JavaScript. It's just a um, it's a native WebKit uh, environment. So it's just a V8 driver that lives uh, that runs natively on on your your laptop instead of loading from a website. Uh, and uh, there are some interesting uh, uh, Crypto, there's some interesting AP standards that we are waiting for uh, for larger compliance across browsers to increase the speed uh, of our implementation. So the WC3 has a candidate recommendation for a web crypto API that we are waiting for to basically, uh, you know, it's native AES and it's, I think there's GCM, there's a GC, the, uh, a, a stream cipher uh, GCM that's much faster that may uh, become a standard across all the browsers, which would let us uh, increase the speed of of the file upload, which would be great. Side notes: um, This is the system. Uh, if you are interested at all in contributing to Global Leaks, if you're interested in learning more about the system, if you're interested in running. Uh, if you're interested in uh, working with us, uh, either uh, come to uh, the OFTC uh, IRC network and join the channel Global Leaks. Uh, we have email, there's a website, there's a GitHub. This project lives on GitHub right now. And uh, this is my uh, fingerprint, and I am cynic on OFTC. Uh, I'm not sure how much time I have, but I'm happy to answer any questions. and. Uh, Thank you guys. It's kind of a funky little environment, but uh, ah, thank you. <laughs> Later. <laughs> Fantastic. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I think there's one here. Oh, grand. All right, so I came in late, for which I apologize, Nuts. and missed most of the actual stuff about JavaScript crypto. But okay. um, I'm curious, have you had a chance to talk with Nadim Kabaisi about his PhD thesis? No. He is working on um, verifiable JavaScript and a compiler to uh, to do uh -huh. that, for, uh, to, do, to do a lot of the nasty verification work for you. And the paper's not out yet, but um, Global Leaks is easy to remember. I can poke you, a, I can send a copy your way that would uh, be when it finally fantastic. comes out. I'm, I'm super excited about it, so... Ah, that's great. Yeah, we um, I, 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 for running JavaScript in a browser, there's all sorts of funky stuff. I think it's SNI, which is a not S and SNI. No, that's that's for um, JLS. But uh, uh, there's also like a hash based verification uh, for uh, you know you, uh, con you know external CDN. So you have some content of of maybe an application, and you store the hash of that application next to the the javascript file that you load in your html and like uh i it it, it, it seems like ah maybe you could do this in in global leaks use case but you know that first once you hit that server the the, the index page that you download is going to be uh totally determined by that server so you're trusting the server on first use um, but if it's you know if we if we generated a, a Chrome application or something, okay maybe we could get around trusting this JavaScript in the browser. And I'd be in it, yeah. So yeah, and it's something uh, yeah you spend a lot of time working on, and it's kind of a crapshoot. Um, so thank you guys. Uh, I'll throw yeah.